Okay, for the last subtopic is 1.4, which is science, technology, and society in the 20th century. So, what are the definition of science, technology, and society? Science is any system of knowledge that is concerned with the physical world and its phenomena based on observations and systemic experimentation while technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes especially in industry and society is a group of individuals involved in persistent social interaction or a large social group sharing the same special or social territory first we will go through the science discovery in 20th century on 1900, Max Planck proposes quantum theory. Max Planck, a German physicist, is best known as the originator of the quantum theory of energy for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1918. His work contributed significantly to the understanding of atomic and subatomic processes. What is quantum theory? Quantum theory is the theoretical basis of modern physics that explains the nature and behavior of matter and energy on the atomic and subatomic level. The nature and behavior of matter and energy at that level is sometimes referred as quantum physics or quantum mechanics. Organizations in several countries have devoted significant resources to the development of quantum computing which use the, use the quantum theory to drastically improve computing capabilities beyond what is possible using today's computer. How Planck discovered this theory? Planck had sought it to discover the reason that radiation from a glowing body changed in color from red to orange and finally to blue as its temperature rises. He found that by making the assumption that energy existed in, 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 individu in individual units in the same way that the matter does, rather than just a constant electromagnetic wave. The use of, the, the uses of quantum theory is in computer, backlit, LCD and camera. This theory is being used by those devices because different atomic energy will produce different color and this theory is origi originated by the country of German. Next science discovery is on 1910 where Ernest Rutherford discovers the atomic nucleus. In 1909 Ernest Rutherford's student reported some unexpected results from an experiment Rutherford had assigned him. Rutherford called this news the most incredible event of his life. In the well-known experiment, alpha particles were observed to scatter backwards from a gold foil. Rutherford explained that the scattering was caused by a hard, dense core at the center of the atom. Almost all matter in the universe is concentrated within atomic nuclei. Some are 100,000 times smaller than the atom. They contain 4,000 times more mass than their orbiting electrons. All nuclei are made of neutrons and protons, collectively known as nucleons, which play similar roles in maintaining the structure of the nucleus. Proton is positively charged while electron is neg negatively charged. In any complete atom, the number of protons in the nucleus is precisely equal to the number of electrons orbiting it, meaning that the atom's total charge is equal to zero. When a large nucleus falls apart to form smaller atoms, the process is called fission. When lighter atoms are forced together to produce a heavier atom, the process is called fusion. This can transfer their kinetic energy to the surroundings, heating it. And this heat can be used to boil water, producing steam to run a turbine, and run electric generator. Fusion energy has also been controlled enough 
to operate the nuclear power plants around the world. Next science discovery is in 1915 where Albert Einstein publishes his general theory of relativity. In 1905, Albert Einstein determined that the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers and the speed of light in a vacuum was independent of the motion of all observers. This was the theory of special, special relativity. It introduced a new framework for all physics for all of physics and propose new concepts of space and time. Einstein then spent 10 years trying to include acceleration in the theory and published his theory of gener general relativity in 1915. In it, he determined that massive objects cause a distortion in space-time, which is felt as gravity. Special relativity as applies to all physical phenomena in the absence of gravity. General relativity explains the law of gra gra gravitation and its relation to other forces of nature. As example, if you take a loop of wire and move it through a magnetic field, you generate an electric current. The charged particles in the wire are affected by the changing magnetic field, which forces some of them to move and creates the current. And the uses of the general theory of relativity is in order for your car's GPS navigation to function as accurately as it does, satellites have to take relativistic effects into account, where this theory is used. The satellites are also sending signals to ground stations on Earth. The stations and the GPS unit in your car are all experiencing higher accelerations due to gravity than the satellites in orbit. In easy work, do it because of theory of relativity, your GPS connection can be really fast. Next, in 1953, Francis Crick and James Watson discovered the structure of DNA. The discovery in 1953 of the double helix, the twisted ladder structure of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, by James Watson and Francis Crick, marked a milestone in the history of science and gave rise to modern molecular biology which is largely concerned with understanding how genes control the chemical processes within the cell. In short order, their discovery yielded groundbreaking insights into the genetic code and protein synthesis. Deoxyribonucleic acid is a molecule, molecule composed of two polynucleotide chains that coil around each other to form a double helix carrying genetic instructions for the development, functioning, growth, and reproduction of all known organisms. The, the, the benefits of knowing the structure of DNA is we can apply it in cloning, which is the process of making multiple identical copies of a gene. DNA technology is being used nowadays to help to help diagnose genetic diseases such as sickle cell disease and Huntington's disease. Since all those diseases are transferred genetic genetically from one generation to the next, those who have such diseases can be identified earlier and can be treated before the symptoms appear. DNA technology is also critical in developing vaccines. Vaccines are harmless version of pathogen, such as a bacteria or virus. Vaccines can be used to trick your body into fighting the harmless version so that if you are exposed to a harmful version of the pathogen, you have already built up defenses. Next, apart from 
science discoveries in 20th century, we will go through to new technology that been invented in 20th century that also give impact to our society nowadays. In 1902, first modern air conditioning is invented by Willis Carrier. The first modern air conditioner was invented in 1902 by Willis Haviland Carrier, a skilled engineer who began experimenting with the loss of humidity control to solve an application problem at a printing plant in Brooklyn, New York. He applied the same concept of mechanical refrigeration that was established in earlier years. In 1933, the Carrier Air Conditioning Company of America develops an air conditioner using a belt-driven condensing unit and associated blower. Today's air conditioner is operating on the same fundamental science as Carrier's 1933 system, but it has been enhanced in vapor compression, diagnostic and controls, electronic sensors, material, and more energy efficiency. This modern air conditioning is uh, orig originated in the country of America. The benefit of modern air conditioning is um, it has been installed at school, office, and home, reduced possibility of asthma attacks, provides cool place to exercise, and less insights and parasites in home. And of course, it will comfort you more. By the year 1903, the Wright brothers fly their first plane. The Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, were two American aircraft pioneers, generally, generally credited with inventing, building, and flying the world's first successful motor-operated airplane. They made the first controlled, sustained flight of a power heavier than air aircraft with the Wright Flyer on December 17, 1903. In 1904 to 1905, the brothers developed their flying machine to make longer running and more aerodynamic flights with the Wright Flyer II, followed by the first truly practical fixed wing aircraft, the Wright Flyer III. The Wright brothers were also the first to invent aircraft controls that make fixed wing powered flight possible. The brothers gained the mechanical skills essential to their success by working for years in their shop with printing presses, bicycles, moto, and other machinery. Their work with bicycle in particular influenced their belief that an unstable vehicle such as a flying machine could be controlled and balanced with practice. From 1900 until their first powered flights in, in late 1903, they conducted extensive glider tests that also developed their skills as pilots. This airplane is uh, or, uh, originated from the country of American. And the benefit of airplane to our society nowadays is of course it is important for traveling either domestic or international flight and it consume less time than other transports do you know where first television is invented as yes. in 1925 the first working television is invented by john logi bart John Logie Bart was a Scottish inventor, electrical engineer, and innovator, demonstrating the world's first working television system on 26 January 1926. He also invented the first publicly demonstrated color television system and the first purely electronic color television picture tube. In 1928, the Bart Television Development Company achieved the first trans transatlantic television transmission. 
Bart's early technological successes and his role in the practical introduction of broadcast television for home entertainment have earned him a prominent place in television history. The origin country of television is Scotland. The benefit or uses of television nowadays to society, we can get information about what happens around and we can watch TV's programs for entertainment. In 1957, the world's first satellite is launched. Yes, it is the same with the year of our Malaysia Independence Day. So, what are satellites? In the context of spaceflight, a satellite is an object that has been intentionally placed into orbit. These objects are called artificial satellites. This is to distinguish them from our natural satellites, such as Moon. On 4 October 1957, the Soviet Union the, Sov the Soviet Union launched the world's first artificial satellite, which is Sputnik, Sputnik 1. It orbited for three weeks before its batteries died and then orbited silently for two months before it fell back into the atmosphere. Tracking and studying Sputnik 1 from Earth provided scientists with valuable information. The density of the upper atmosphere could be deduced from its drag on the orbit, and the propagation of its radio signals gave data about the ionosphere. So, what are the benefits or uses of satellites? The uses of satellite is, as example, Malaysia, Malaysia nowadays use satellite for global positioning system or GPS, which the satellite is required when sending data of the location either to uh, one person to another person. Another use of satellite is obtaining satellite data images to discover new places and for weather forecasts. Are you listening this voice note right now on a smartphone? Of course, it is a yes, right? But do you know when is the first cell phone is made? In 1973, Martin Cooper invents the first handheld cell phone. The first handheld cell phone was made on 3 April 1973 by Motorola engineer Martin Cooper from Sixth Avenue in New York. Cooper hoisted the two and half pound prototype and declared that his Motorola team had devised a functional portable phone. The clunky shoe phone, almost as big as a shoe box, allowed a user to talk for 35 minutes and required 10 hours to recharge, according to Wired magazine. Motorola spent 10 years overcoming technical and reg regulatory hurdles and began commercial service in 1983 using a slimmer 16-ounce model that cost between $3,500 and $4,000. And the early phones were too big and expensive to suit most consumers, but they set a precedent for today's sleek and lightweight models that have become standard equipment for everybody. The country of the origin country for cell phone is America and the benefits of cell phone is communication, small and convenient and texting. We can see now this smartphone or cell phone is really important and it's become a daily routine for us at least to check on our phone at, at least one times per hour. So it is 
really important to our society nowadays.